There are two reasons why you are going to fail at breaking into investment banking. And unless you can fix these two issues, then you're never going to get into investment banking or anywhere else in finance. For those of you who are new to this channel, my name is Nasir. After business school, I went straight into investment banking as a mergers and acquisitions analyst where I've interviewed over dozens of candidates. So let's get straight into it. Issue number one is not knowing how to build rapport with your interviewer. Let me give you an example. If you have never been camping before in your life and you have the choice of either going with a camping expert, someone who's been camping for all their life, or you can choose your best friend who has also never been camping before, who would you choose? Who would you go with? Your best friend. Even if your best friend is a complete screw up, you would still choose your best friend over a camping expert. Just like that. Whenever we interview candidates for investment banking roles, so whether it's analyst roles and associate roles, sometimes even internship roles, it doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how good your grades are. It doesn't matter how, uh, how great your experience is because everyone who's interviewing pretty much have the exact same accolades, the exact same achievements from the same background. What separates you is how good of a connection you can build with your interviewer, how much rapport you can build with your interviewer, how much trust you can build with your interviewer. And if you fail at building trust, then you're like the camping expert where you've worked hard at getting all your accolades, all your achievements, but you're still not going to get picked. Whenever we're interviewing for candidates, we don't just look for academic achievements. We don't just look for great experience. We look for personality. We look for someone that we can actually have a conversation with. Think about it. If we're going to spend 13 hours beside each other, I don't want to walk into the office and see a robot. I don't want to walk into the office and sit next to someone who's always quiet. I want to speak to someone who's interesting. So during your interviews, you have to demonstrate the fact that you're not a boring robot. So how do you build rapport? Simple, you can build trust in two different ways. The first way of building trust is by showing that you and the interviewer both had similar life experiences. So you both grew up in the same town, you both speak the same languages, you both have similar culture, you both have similar life experiences. And that's one way you can build trust. Now you can only do that if you know who's going to be interviewing you. So before the interview, you can do some some Facebook stalking, you can do some research on them, you can know exactly what they like and what they don't like. Now the best place for this is of course Facebook. In Facebook you can see exactly what they like, from what books they read, where they've traveled, what music they like. Not LinkedIn. LinkedIn is for a professional network. Whatever they like on LinkedIn, that's not what we want to talk about 24 hours a day. What they do want to talk about 24 hours a day is the music they like, the places they've traveled to. The second way of building trust is by showing the interviewer that you both see the world in the, in the exact same way. Now that's a little difficult unless you actually know the person, but that's one other way of building trust. Now I cannot emphasize this point enough. Building trust, building rapport during your interview is extremely important. What some of the best interviews that I've ever had with candidates weren't even about investment banking. Sure, they started off with the typical investment banking interview questions, so technical questions, behavioral questions. For those of you that want to know exactly what we asked during an interview, then check out my video on investment banking interview questions and answers. So again, some of the best interviews I've had weren't even about investment banking questions. They started off with investment banking questions, so your typical technical questions and behavioral questions, but eventually it transitioned from, a, from an interview to a conversation. And that conversation were about random things from poker, where I've, where I've traveled to, what plans I have. And they were some of the best interviews I've had because they were conversations. Think about it from my perspective. If I'm going to be working 13 hours, 15 hours a day, the last thing that I want to do is talk more about how to build a DCF, how, to, how do I go through a comparables analysis. What I want to talk about is my own interest. So you have to think about it from your interviewer's perspective. What do they want to talk about? And the second issue that you need to fix, otherwise you're never going to break into investment banking. Now, this goes for whether you're from a finance background or a non-finance background, whether you're applying for an internship and this role or associate role, you have to know your technical questions inside out. Not knowing your technical questions is kind of like saying, you want to go teach maths, but yet you don't even know one plus one. You want to be a driving instructor, but you've never driven a car before. There's just no point. The basics of what we expect you to know is basic finance, basic accounting, basic M&A, LBO, economics, and valuation. 
You don't need to know intermediate stuff. You don't even need to know advanced stuff. We need you to know the basics. You need to show us that investment banking is a priority. So you've taken the time to go and network with investment bankers and to go and research what it is that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and how we do it. And the best way to evidence that is by knowing how to answer technical questions. So if you don't even know how to get from equity value to enterprise value, why we use unlevered free cash flow in a DCF, What's the difference between goodwill and intangibles? How to build an M&A model? How to build a DCF model? Then you are already behind and you need to fix that. Otherwise, you're never going to get into investment banking. The number one reason why people fail their interviews is because of a lack of technical knowledge. And I know a lot of people are going to say, but I never studied this in school. I never studied this during my degree. I completely understand. I was in the exact same boat. I have a degree in economics and masters in finance and investment from Durham University, which is a pretty decent university. And I thought that I could go into Morgan Stanley and rely on my education to pass interviews. But guess what? I was rejected. My first investment banking interview at Morgan Stanley, I was rejected. Now my second interview, I passed. But assuming that what you've learned in school is somehow going to carry you through investment banking is false. You are going to fail. What you learn in school is for schoolwork. Investment banking is the real world and you have to understand this. So learn from my mistake and understand that what they're going to be testing you on, what we're going to be testing you on, whether you go in Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, middle market bank, boutique banks, we're still going to ask you a series of technical questions. Whether you're applying for an analyst role or associate role, you have to know your technicals. Not knowing your technicals is an automatic fail. So how do you learn the technical knowledge required to pass your interview? Well, you can start off by watching the video where I literally break down all of the technical questions you're going to get asked, or you can network with investment bankers at an analyst and associate level. Make sure they're analysts and associates because it's only them that are going to give you the right answers in terms of technical questions and answers. When you reach a VP level and an MD level, you're not used to asking technical questions. At that stage, you're pretty much just asking behavioral question. So if you want to ace your technical part of the interview, you have to go out and seek out analysts and associates and ask them exactly what kind of question they normally ask candidates. And if you can't do that, then we've created an investment banking interview guide where we go through all the questions that you can get asked during the application stage all the way to final interviews. So we cover first round interviews, second round interviews, assessment centers, super day guides, and the topics of conversations to talk about when it comes to interviewing with MDs and VPs, as well as how to get into investment banking, what you should avoid, and everything in between. And in our recent update, we have 13 investment banking mock interviews with the likes of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, for analyst positions, internships, and associate roles. So in summary, there are two things you need in order to pass your investment banking interview. And this goes for anyone applying to investment banking. Number one is build trust. Learn how to build trust. If you don't build trust with your interviewer, then we would, we would rather choose someone who is less technical, but at least we trust them. We know who they are. We can conversate with them. And second, learn your technicals. Without your technicals, you are going to fail. For those of you with the interview guide, then make sure you focus a lot on the building trust section. There's a reason why we've created and we've dedicated 10% of the interview guide solely on showing you how to build trust. Because in your first round interview, trust is important, but it's even more important as you progress. Round two interviews, round three interviews, final round interviews when it comes to interviewing with MDs and VPs. Now, if your first round interview went okay, and your associate and analyst just didn't really like you, it doesn't matter. As long as the VP and MD likes you, that's all that counts. I've interviewed candidates where I didn't really think they were going to make it, but I don't know what they said to my MD, to my VP, that made them like them. And two weeks later, they're working beside me. So it's really important that you know exactly what to talk about to your MD, to your VP. And if you're fresh out of university, fresh out of business school, there's a massive maturity difference between you and them. Your typical MD, VP are married, they have a couple of kids, they have mortgages. They are in charge of client and they're managing client expectation. That's what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So in terms of their responsibility, what they're used to, what their experiences are, it's going to be very different compared to you. So you need to know more about what you should stay away from. The topics of conversation that you should completely stay away from. That's what ends up burning great candidates. 
So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned exactly what you need to improve on. I've gotten a couple of emails on why do I keep getting rejected? Why can't I get an interview? Why can't I do this, that? Why do I keep getting rejected? I went to a great school. I have a great degree. I'm really this, I'm really that. And it literally falls down to two things. Number one, not building trust during your interviews. Second, not knowing technicals. Those are the two main reasons why 98% of people fail their first round interviews. If you want me to cover any other areas of investment banking recruitment, then just leave me a comment down in the section below. And of course, check out our investment banking interview guide and mock interview so that you can ace your interview. And you can get all of this for free in our financial modeling course.